to be very honest with you, most people don't need to watch this video because most people nowadays use speakers with built-in amplifiers. So for example, a Bluetooth speaker, well that one has an amplifier built into it already. So you don't have to bother finding the right amplifier for your speaker because the amplifier is already in the same box. The manufacturer has already put the right amplifier in there, which is very convenient. But for all of you people out there who do need to match a, an amplifier to a speaker, well, this video is for you. A loudspeaker is a device that takes an audio signal and converts an audio signal into sound that we can actually perceive. However, it needs a bit more power to do that than, for example, a pair of headphones. So a pair of headphones can do exactly the same thing, but because the speakers are right on your ears, or even in your ears sometimes, um, the headphones don't need to produce very loud sound, right? They can use very little power, and so they can be driven by a very weak audio signal straight from a computer, for example. Well, a loudspeaker that is in a room, and you need to be able to hear from at least a couple of meters away, needs more power. It needs a more powerful audio signal um, in order to properly produce sound. Therefore, we need an amplifier. An amplifier is a device that takes a low power audio signal as an input, and then it puts out a high power audio signal that then goes into a speaker. The speaker then takes this signal and converts it into actual sound waves. So what's happening in the speaker is it's converting electrical energy from the audio signal into mechanical or kinetic energy, which are the sound waves. Unfortunately, this process is far from perfect. The efficiency of a loudspeaker is very low. So um, only a very small part of the energy that goes into the speaker in the form of electricity actually comes out as sound waves. The biggest part of the energy that goes into the speaker comes out as heat. So speakers, the voice coils of speakers, produce an enormous amount of heat, especially when a speaker is playing very, very loud. This is exactly the reason why a speaker has a maximum power handling. So on the back of a speaker, on a little sticker, commonly, or maybe just on the spec sheet of the speaker, you'll find some rating for how much power the speaker is able to handle before it gets destroyed. And the reason is, is that that's the amount of power that is able to dissipate in its voice coil. If you feed in more power into this speaker, then you risk overheating the voice coil and perhaps even burning or melting it, which is obviously not very good for the speaker. So that's why a speaker has a maximum power handling. So on the speaker, you'll find a spec that says power handling, how much power will it be able to take because the speaker doesn't generate any power on its own. And on the amplifier, you'll find a spec that tells you how much power it's able to output to a loudspeaker. So if it says 50 watts on the back of a speaker, that's, that means the speaker is able to take 50 watts um, and not get destroyed. If you see 50 watts on the back of an amplifier, it means the amplifier is able to deliver 50 watts to a speaker that is connected to it. The problem with speaker and amplifier power ratings is there are many different kinds of them. So the first one that you'll probably see quite a lot is called RMS or continuous power. First of all, I'd like to point out that RMS power is an incorrect term, like that's not the proper way of saying it. Um, in the world of speakers, RMS power means the same thing as continuous power. Uh, but really, st please, speaker manufacturers and amplifier manufacturers, please stop using the term RMS power because it's technically incorrect. Uh, but to you and me as a consumer, you can just see that RMS means exactly the same as continuous. So this reading means that if it says, for example, 50 watts RMS or 50 watts continuous, this means that the speaker will be able to handle a 50 watt sine wave being played back continuously. On the amplifier, it obviously means that the amplifier is able to output a 50 watt sine wave continuously. The next reading that you'll find, which is 
very, very useless, is called peak power or peak music power, basically anything that has the word peak in it. Now, the reason this rating is so unreliable and tells you nothing about the performance of a product is because there is no definition of what a peak is. Is a peak three minutes? Is it three seconds? Is it three picoseconds? Who knows? Any speaker can handle 15,000 watts for five nanoseconds, right? <laughs> That's the idea. So peak power is, is not defined as anything. I can build a speaker and I can say it has a peak power of 15 million watts because I don't have to define any amount of time that it will be able to handle that amount of power. Um, so I can basically fill in any number I want. Right, so now we know what power is, then how do we match the speaker to the amplifier when it comes to power? Well, when it comes to power, um, the perfect thing would be to have a an amplifier rated at, let's say, 60 watts continuous and also a 60 watt continuous speaker, right? Perfect match. That obviously makes sense. But you can also have a more powerful amplifier than an, on a smaller speaker and just be careful with the volume knob, right? You can have a 500 watt amplifier on a 50 watt speaker and as long as you don't crank the amplifier up to ridiculous levels, then the speaker will probably be fine. The opposite is also true. It's perfectly fine to drive bigger speakers on smaller amplifiers. So basically you can drive any speaker on any amplifier you want as long as you you're not being an idiot and you're careful with the volume knob so generally what you want to do in order to also achieve the best value for money right so yes you can drive a 50 watt speaker on a thousand watt amplifier but that might be a bit of a waste of money on the amplifier so in order to get a good value for money as well generally what you want to do is have a speaker and an amplifier that are kind of similar so maybe a 100 watt amplifier on an 80 watt speaker or or the other way around an 80 watt amplifier on a 100 watt speaker something like that something that is kind of similar because you also have to realize that the power handling of a speaker is very variable right depending it also depends on the conditions that they're in the conditions of the room the room temperature um, the humidity all of those things affect the maximum power handling of the speaker. Right, an 80 watt speaker can sometimes handle 90 and sometimes only 70 watts. So it's more variable than you think. It's not a very fixed number. It's not like when you have 80 watts, it's fine. And when you go to 81, boom, it's dead. That's not really how it works most of the time, uh, which is why you have a bit of room to, to play around and get an amplifier that is not perfectly the right match. What's more important though when, than power when matching speakers and amplifiers is impedance. So the impedance of a speaker, by the way, impedance is not linked to the performance or the power of the speaker. It's just an arbitrary number that has been chosen when designing the speaker. That's basically what it is. The impedance measured in ohms is the, the ability of a speaker to withstand electric current. And when we're saying impedance in a speaker, we mean nominal impedance because the impedance changes all the time when you're playing music. And so the nominal impedance is kind of an average value, what the average impedance of a speaker is. The lower the impedance of a speaker, the more current it will draw from an amplifier. The higher the impedance of a speaker, the less current it will draw from the amplifier, but also the more voltage you will need to get it up to a higher volume. So generally, this means if you have a 4-ohm amplifier, an amplifier that is designed for 4-ohm speakers, it's absolutely fine to connect an 8-ohm speaker to it. The 8-ohm speaker will just sound a little bit quieter because the 4-ohm amplifier isn't designed to generate a very high voltage. So you're fine connecting higher impedance speakers to low impedance amplifiers, only they will just sound a bit quieter. Uh, because the amplifier is not putting out a very high voltage. Whereas connecting a low impedance speaker to a high impedance amplifier can be a bad idea. If I connect a, a 4 ohm or a 2 ohm speaker to an 8 ohm rated amplifier, then if I really crank up the volume on this amplifier, those speakers are going to draw more current from it than what it's designed for, uh, which can cause issues like clipping. 
and that can destroy the amplifier, but it could also destroy the speaker. So uh, when matching impedances, of course, again, it's ideal to have the same impedance on the amplifier as on the speaker, uh, but as long as the speaker is higher than the amplifier, then you're going to be just fine. Personally, I'm using a 6 ohm amplifier on 4 ohm speakers, which is also fine as long as I don't turn it up all the way to the max, which is never going to happen in this room, so I'm fine too. So that brings us to the conclusion of this video. With power, try to pick something that is in the same neighborhood. So it doesn't have to match exactly, especially since power is a very variable thing when you're playing music. So pick an amplifier and a speaker that are kind of close to each other to make sure that you're getting value for money. Don't buy an extremely overkill amplifier or an extremely overkill speaker because that's just a waste. And then finally, pick the right impedance. Don't pick a speaker with an impedance that is way too low for your amplifier because that could roast the amplifier or the speaker, or both in the worst case, of course. Well, anyway, I hope this video um, has made matching amplifiers and speakers just a bit easier, and thank you for watching.